The recent local government elections in Edo State, where the governing People's Democratic Party recorded a landslide victory, demonstrates the need for governors to loosen up their grip on local governments for them to perform their constitutional roles across many states. The local government councils um, seem to be under tight grip of ruling parties of those states, whereby the party in power wins all the seats, even when they lose in the national elections. Expectedly, too, opposition parties report allegations of voter suppression, harassment, and resource manipulation. Are these types of elections the new norm in Nigeria? And how can we combat this sham election? Well, joining us to discuss this is Kunle Lawal. He's the executive director of the Electoral College Nigeria. It's so good to have you join us, Kunle. Good evening. Can you hear me, Kunle? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Perfect. Good evening, and it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, because we don't have too much time. Let's go straight to it. The issue of local governments and state governments, especially... Um, continuously, you know, it's seeming like they have no powers constitutionally to do their jobs except by the directive of state governors has been an issue that's been discussed right from under the Obasanjo administration. Um, almost at the close of that administration, we also saw that local government elections were now optional for certain states and their governors. And here we are today, we're debating the issue uh, of states carrying the day, uh, whatever party is at the center, carrying all of, you know, having a landslide victory uh, during elections. Um, how easy will it be to be able to uh, loosen that grip uh, that state governments have over local governments? Kulne, can you hear me? So for me, um, this is a very, this topic I'm always interested in. It's always yes, I can hear you. This is a topic I've always been interested in, and um, the local governments generally have always been clouded by the fact that the people, that's the electorate, do not care. So you have participation in local government at less than nine percent. Now this is a big issue when you're looking at it technically. There's nowhere in the Constitution that grants autonomy to states, but states are asking for a place in the Constitution for local governments to be granted autonomy. This is upon the fact they are being given power over security over their local governments. They are being given power over uh, markets, uh, parks. They are able to um, tax businesses and control outdoor advertising within local government. And it is clear to see at this point that... Um, there is no local government in Nigeria that receives less than 130 million naira per month from the FAC allocations. So the question therein is, what has happened? Well, well, that's also that's also a big question to um, ask. But let's also look at, because again, if there is no oversight, most times if you go to local government offices, for example, issues such as um, sanitation. And several other things, you know, local taxation. Half the time, when people go to their local government chairman or the local government offices, they keep saying, oh, the state governments are not giving us money. The state government is not letting us do this. The state government is not letting us do that. So maybe, yes, these monies have been put in the local government accounts, but they do not necessarily have the powers to disburse and use as they should if their principal, the governor, says not to. So the truth is that there's nowhere it is written where local uh, state governments control the funds of local governments. What is in the constitution is that on economic planning, like, uh, local governments and state governments can come together and form a cohesive front to do something that's instrumental in the state. But what has happened, as you've seen in, um, let's say, the case of Ogun State, they've kidnapped uh, the local government's funds entirely. And you know, through the uh, Ministry of Inter-Local Government Affairs, and that is where they demand monies from local governments, which are paid from federal directly to local government. So this, this machination always happens at state government level. And one of the things I think is the cause of this is that, that INEC in its space of restructuring has also handed over um, local, go um, local government elections to states. And because they take those elections, they dictate its outcomes and also dictate the service of local government. So there are two things that come into play here. 
First, the electoral, uh, the electorate's non-performance with local government. That's the local governments are the first handshake of democracy to the people. Yet we have less than a nine percent uh, participation in local government elections across board. And then governors now thriving on that same parameter that the people do not care about the local government to stifle and kidnap its funds. I'll be honest and state clearly that um, in the case of Ogun State, when this local government chairman refused to give money back to the, to the state, uh, they actually activated something that most of us think is dead, and that is uh, councillors as a legislative arm of local government and, and suspended or has taken out now the, the local government chairman in Ogun State that has refused to, to perform. So local... Um for that local government chairman, I have heard his interview twice, and he's talked about the fact that he challenged, you know, um, certain things that the governor did. Um, and then, of course, he, like you said, this triggered the councillors voting against him and then, of course, asking for his removal. Now, these, all of these things happen. Um, Again, it, it's the ignorance of the people that these politicians are capitalizing on. Because when you tell the average person or you ask the average person, do you know your councillor? Do you know the supervisor for education in your local government? Or many of them have no idea. I've heard a case where a local government chairman um, does not live in his local government, uh, comes into the local government on a Monday, stays in a hotel for the whole week, and then on the weekend goes back to his family. How is he supposed to be in touch with what's happening in his community? And how are the people supposed to reach him if he operates from a hotel? I think, I think this problem starts from the top. And you cannot alienate even the fact that the Nigerian federal government decided to build a house or build an estate for people serving in the House of Rep and the Senate, stopping them from interacting with their constituents. And this goes down the line to every other state, every other sphere. So what you're seeing, the, the anomalies you're seeing in local government is actually uh, reminiscent of what happens upstairs at the federal level. Let, let's talk about redeeming what's left of what we call a local government. And I think to add that what's most confusing is that you find um, state governors asking for... Go ahead. Kune, Kune, can you hear me? Uh, we really have, uh, I think we, uh, you are having a very terrible Don't network today. Uh, Kune, let me just ask my last question so we can wrap this up. Um, unfortunately, you keep going on and off. Um, how do we begin to redeem, where do we start to redeem what's left of what we call local government, especially election-wise? Uh, because if you are the one who puts the man there, you're able to go to him for accountability. I, education of the of the electorate is really key. What most of us do not know is that even at local government level, local governments at every level, that's the chairman and the councillors, are not even guarded by immunity. So it means that these monies which are being taken in directly and which are being kidnapped by the state governors, local government chairman can go to jail for these purposes and even the councillors. So I think the uh, first thing would be to educate the electorate, then force the electorate to hold them accountable and participate more in its elections, then we could get something from the local government. Great. Um, how do we also, uh, yes, that we can be educated. Just for example, let me take, for example, the um, February elections, um, the presidential elections. Many people were educated. Many people were called out to come get their PVCs, go out and vote. Uh, the process will be seamless. It will be free, fair, and credible, uh, even though many question if we've ever had free, fair, and credible elections in this country. But um, if as much as people were educated, they still showed up to the elections, and many would still say the elections somewhat was a sham for them. There are others who would say also this election was credible. There are some who would say that you know the elections were skewed. Um, even if people get educated about this local government's elections, there's, that still, there's still that strong arm of the state governments. How do we make sure that that hand does not become too strong? So, so for me, there's a, big, there's a very big difference.
There's a, there's a, for me, there's a very big difference between education or participation of, of people in voting, which is voter awareness, and then education of what actually happens in politics. Most people do not know what the House of Rep does, what the local government chairman does. They don't know that the councillors are, of course, the National Assembly of the local government. It is that education that needs to happen before we can begin to, to engage other systems. You can't engage a system you do not understand. And as regards the elections, there were many anomalies preceding the elections in the Electoral Act, like looking at submission of... Um, of a party members read uh, electronically and the hard copies, which are not done by the 18 political parties, which was totally ignored by the Nigerian populace. And then at the end, you want a free and fair election. How can you do that? So for me, I critically say you cannot engage a system you do not understand. Well, Kunle, I wish we had more time to, you know, talk more on this issue, but we will revisit the issue of local governments and their importance uh, subsequently. Uh, but I want to say thank you. Kunle Lawal is the Executive Director, Electoral College Nigeria. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Well, that's the show tonight. Thank you tonight. very much. Thanks. That's the show tonight. We want to thank you all for being part of our conversation tonight. We'll be back tomorrow on Plus Politics Talking for Development. I am Mary Anako. Go on our YouTube, Plus TV Africa, and play catch up on all our previous episodes. Have a good evening.